Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you want to be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you want to be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just want to be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals, but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do want to do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college level course, it's better than a college level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course. Thank you for watching this and for your support. And thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. Look, Photoshop is a garbage program. I hate it. Photoshop is a very bad program. It's a bad program for bad people. Bad program for bad people. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday, Wednesday stream. This might, this might wind up being basically just a, uh, a hello because uh, I have to take off to my in-laws and I had more stuff to uh, prepare than I thought before streaming in order to pack up to go over to the in-laws for the holidays. And my time got a little away from me, so I'm starting later here than I'd hope and I might have to run, but I did want to say hello to everybody, wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Why, why do they pardon the turkeys? That implies they did something wrong and I would argue it's unlikely they've done anything wrong. I think it's um, sort of cloud cover for us that we frame it as we're pardoning them. They, um, it's like we're saying we've decided that you, you're off the hook on getting eaten. And it's like, I don't think they did anything to deserve getting eaten in the first place. So it seems weird to pardon them. I was just helping my wife with some Photoshop stuff and it was like, uh, it just really reminded me that Photoshop is a horrible, horrible program. Horrible, horrible program. Horrible. I mean, it's bad. It's a bad, bad program. It's, the worst yet. it's like, whenever I need to explain something in Photoshop to someone, I, I hear the, um, the apologetics that I have to do. And like, I know it doesn't make any sense, but that work, but it works. It's like, oh my God, you have to say that constantly. It's just, what a bad, bad program. It's a bad, bad program.
Hello to Oster, Krumps, Motion Nakvi, Florencia Vasquez, Daleb, Reynolo Dominguez, John D. Harvey, Lucas Suarez, Ignas Puikis, Colin Gallagher, Oster, Dino Blaster, Precious, Nick Ravioli, Bats Bug, Marta Diaz, Corey Kroon, Crum, Crumknocker, Crumknocker, Bima Wantara. Whoa, my color balance is all off on my face cam. Eh, it doesn't matter today. I'm just my, my lights are all unbalanced. Sorry, everybody. Streaming on the fly here today. Um, I don't think we will have a stream this Friday. I'm gonna be taken off for the holiday. But we gotta put in a little time on a little time on our gobelinos. Our gobble gobble gobelinos. Gobble gobble. Gobble gobble. Gobble gobble gobelinos. Gobble gobble gobelinos. I make art on the internet. And I say things like gobble gobble gobelinos. What's poppin', Steven? Um what is poppin'? Not much. Make an art, furious at Photoshop, it's an absurd program. Working on the Gobelinos. Uh, heading off to the in-laws today to begin Thanksgiving celebrations. Thanksgiving is uh, my favorite United States holiday. It's a, a holiday that we have here in my nation where we all eat as much as is possible. And then the real holiday is the regrets the day after, is the sitting around rubbing your belly, being hungover. That's the real holiday. The eating day is really just preparation for the actual holiday. It's a regret-based holiday. We regret how much we ate, we regret how much we drank, and we regret our sordid, sordid history of colonialism. And we also managed to do the uh, ethical mental gymnastics necessary to pardon turkeys who did nothing wrong <laughs> to deserve their consumption. <laughs> I'm not anti-American. My wife just accused me of being anti-American. You know I love being an American. I'm proud of my absurdist American roots. Um, I would like to ask you a question. Do you think there is an age where it is too late to enter the world of professional art industries? No. Oh, yeah. No, Deirdre. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to get another microphone and just point it at you, over on the other side. Oh, oh God! And I closed my whole chat. Where'd you go? Um. No, I do not think um, I do not think there is an age where you're, you're too old. I mean, people people develop their abilities at different rates. People start at slightly different um, levels of acuity and acumen. It it really just depends on you as an as a person. There there's plenty of people who will never have really have taken art seriously until they're in their 50s or something. And just because of their particular temperament, their life situation, their resources, how fast of a learner they are, they can become a professional pretty quick, even starting that late. And then there's other people who, let's say, started when they were 10, but don't have a lot of focus, have other problems in their life, um, have things that are just sort of knocking them about on their path and maybe just aren't the fastest learners and they could be going at it for 30, 40 years and they can never quite make a career out of it. It's, um, it's a very individual thing. And uh, depending on who you are and your situation, that's either going to be hardening or disheartening. But because it's individual, that means that you, the problems therein are always susceptible to your ingenuity and your self-knowledge, you can always turn the ship around.
why this animal name is turkey? It's a great question. I wonder what the etymological root is in association with the nation. That's super nice to hear. I have a lot of anxiety about this. Yeah, I understand. I mean, trying to make an art career can definitely be an anxiety inducing thing. Um, it's totally normal. But um, you gotta trust yourself on the journey. You really do. A huge, a huge shared quality amongst professional artists is that at some point they bite the bullet on just trusting themselves, which is easier said than done. It's very difficult to make it if you don't go through some period where you're just like, you know what? I'm just gonna do what I think is right and I'm gonna believe in myself and it doesn't matter um, what age I am, what my situation is. Well, again, it matters what your situation is, but you get what I'm saying. You just gotta trust that if you really feel that strongly about it, there's something there for you. Any tips for good rendering? My friend, you get the course. You get the course, of course. My, um, I really like rendering and I really love, I, I don't really think of it as rendering. I think of it as modeling form. And uh, because of my love for it, unfortunately, it's very difficult for me to boil it down because I, uh, I just think of it on a very deep level. It's like the, the quick tip that I would give is pretty unactionable without, um, without a lot more instruction. The, if I had to say one thing about rendering, the, the, the main tip I'd give is conceive of light so vividly that the illusion of form is real to you and everything else will handle itself. See, that makes no, no goddamn sense and is completely inactionable unless uh, we talk about it a lot more. It's like, you gotta be on the form. The best renderings are done when you believe your own illusion as deeply as the audience is supposed to. It must feel real to you. That requires a knowledge of the nature of light, the nature of the modeling factors as produced by light. Happy pre-Turkey Day to all. Happy pre-Turkey pre Day to all. For any of you Americans out there who are gonna be celebrating Thanksgiving very soon, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great holiday. I hope you rest up. I hope you eat a lot of delicious food and I hope that you enjoy your time with your family. And don't forget to give thanks for the great gift of drawing. We're very lucky to have any time at all to do it and any ability at all to do it. So thank your old friend drawing for being around.
Let's see what else is up. I believe the Proco video, the follow-up AI video is uh, coming out next week. Probably right at the beginning of next week. Sam Lamb, how are you, my friend? Is there any book that goes into the scientific side of light just to get a grasp of how it influences the world? Um, like Sam Lamb said, I do go into that at the beginning of the course. It's a significant portion right there, right off the bat at the beginning of the course. Also, this, some of the stuff that I'm most proud of. I worked super hard on those multimedia chapters right up front in the course on the nature of light. Um, I had to learn a bunch of things to do them. There's a lot of animations and 3D animations and things like that. Um, I'm super proud of those. Uh, those are some of the most involved things I've done. It took very long to write the scripts. It took a lot of proofing and editing with my wife and rewriting them. Um, it was a lot of fun to shoot like the prop shots and things like that to explain concepts. I really had a lot of fun doing those. Those were really involved. They took a ridiculously long amount of time too, but um, yeah, that for that, I really cover that in depth up front in the course. If if it's a book specifically that you want, um, I think probably Gurney's Color and Light is the most accessible start there. It, ha it has a good introduction to the base info. The thing about color and light is that it's, it's really more of like a, um, a reference manual for particular lighting situations. Like it's not necessarily that he's trying to take you beginning to end on explaining the science of it. It's more like uh, it's, a, it's two pages explaining overcast light, two pages explaining direct light or how he, exp how he interprets those things. Um, uh, problems with particular colors in nature, things like that. It's really more like a reference manual on particular color situations and light situations. I think he intends for you to like crack it open <clears throat> when you get stumped in a scene rather than sort of like reading it end to end. I think Gurney wrote it, at least my interpretation is that Gurney wrote it intending you to be like, oh, I'm having trouble with this overcast painting and then go look it up in the book and see tips for overcast lighting situations. Jade World says, AI art still looks unsettling. Looks like pieces and bits, just cut and paste it together. I doubt it'll stay that way, but it's a bit unsettling. Yeah, it's definitely got a, a lot of the generations definitely have an uncanny valley thing going on. But um, yeah, the, the, thing that, the thing that you've got to remember about that is um, you're only noticing that on the ones that you notice that on, right? <laughs> If, uh, if a generation is good enough, if it leaves the uncanny valley, you probably didn't even register it as AI art. That's, that's the issue there. Mm. 
there's plenty of people making AI art who are just not labeling it as such. It's an interesting transformation to see, you know? I find it a bit distracting. Like I know a, I know a few artists who I really like. I almost said liked, but I still like them. But um, you know, I saw them making, you know, explaining in posts that they later remove like, hey, I think I found, I really like this way to combine AI art with my art and it produced like a new look, like a new style. And um, they either buried those or removed those posts. So unless you saw them when they came out, they don't ever talk about it anymore because of the vibe around what's going on. And they're just putting that stuff out there. And it's just like, this is my work. And, and if you didn't know it, if you hadn't caught those posts in the middle, you would assume there's a continuity between their old work and their new work and that they've sort of just you wouldn't know the AI was a part of it, right? Because they're, they're you know, it's getting a result that isn't uncanny. And um, I'm not casting any like moralistic aspersions there because like I said, the work looks good, right? Um, and it's not like they're lying or anything. It's an act of omission, not commission. But I have to admit having, having caught on the ones that I did sort of the way they that affected their process, it is a little, um, I hate to say it, it is distracting. It does, um, it does add a little thought tag when I see their work now that makes it just ever so slightly, it takes a little bit away. I, I wish that wasn't the case. But um, again, the reason I bring that up is to again say, it's only doing that for the ones that I caught it, that I knew about it. There's so many other artists that I didn't know about it, that I don't know about it and I'll never know, right? So the Uncanny Valley thing is like, again, just to restate, it's like, you're only noticing it on the ones you notice it on. Nick Raviolo says, on that subject, isn't the factor, isn't the factor human in art, isn't the human factor in art that adds a degree of imperfection through either underdeveloped skills or personal perception that make art unique and fun in the first place? Um, well, it, it is for us, you know, my taste aligns with that statement, but um, there, there, there's been plenty of artists who are, are trying to achieve something perfect and um, they would not agree with that perception, even if we could then, you know, audience and artists perceive the work differently. So um, we might sort of laugh at an artist who claims that they're going for perfect and they think that they've achieved perfection because we'd be like, actually, we like it because of the imperfections that you're putting in here. But they'd be like, no, that's not what's good. I want to work that stuff out. Um, it, I think it's too subjective to say anything uh, ultimate on any of those points. And um, I think that, I think that um, we might do damage to what's on the table for artists to pursue if in reaction to AI art, we try to hold up opinions like that as uh, what makes human art different or what makes AI art wrong or something like that. Um, again, like I said, I personally agree with you, but it's just, um, they're very nuanced discussions. You know, they're very, very nu nuanced discussions.
what is perfect art? There is none. Yeah, indeed. I am. Um, I don't think so. But if we're if we're going to be, um, you know, honest here, I've I've met plenty of artists who they say no that there is good art and there is perfect art and there is objectively good and objectively perfect art and that's what I'm going for, right? I think they're silly and wrong, but their view is right in their world and my view is right in my world. You know, like I can't, um, um, I don't think I can drag them over to my viewpoint and there's no, I see no reason to, like it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. It's like art is so flexible, is so open to interpretation that th people can go a whole career believing that silly crap and make a lot of great stuff. So um, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not gonna say they're, yeah, it's just like it's, it's wrong headed, I think, and a waste of time to try to label people who think that as like unworthy or they shouldn't be looking at art that way. It's just like, that's just the way they look at art. And that's just the way they look at art. By the way, I entered a state where I don't care about AI. I'll always stand against it, but I stopped thinking about it because who cares? It won't change that I want to get better. Yeah, that's, I mean, it is good. That's very good personally. And I, I don't think anyone should, I think everyone should reserve the right to ignore things that are causing them a emotional damage like that if it's getting overbearing, you know? There's enough emotional damage from the real things in life, like relationships and loss and money problems and things like that. There's enough emotional damage there that we don't need to add it on in art. But um, if you don't have that, I think it's okay to care about AI art. I mean, I care. Oh, I care a lot. <laughs> oh, I care a lot. But I can care a lot because I'm, you know, stable on the other stuff. You know, I don't. It's not beating me off course on my art and working on my art. And it doesn't cause me any existential worries about whether or not I should continue practicing or anything like that. It's like, because I'm solid on those things, I have the emotional bandwidth left over to uh, care a lot about the AI stuff. John D. Harvey says, I notice a lot of prominent artists saying a version of, I don't think it's a big deal, or I don't care, or I'm not paying attention. Do you think enough artists are taking this seriously? No. That's why I made my video. That's why I made my AI video. I say in there that I don't think enough people are taking it seriously, and that they should. Modern Day James, how are you, buddy? My emotional damage is through the roof because you broke my heart, Steven. What can I say, I'm a heartbreaker. I know that's not true. James is actually extremely emotionally steady, so. It seems like everyone started taking it seriously once you put out your video. Well, I mean, there were already people who were taking it seriously, but maybe it, it helped um, accelerate a greater uptick in people thinking about it critically. I hope it did something. I didn't think it would go to as many people as it did, but I definitely made it hoping it would click in some people's minds and make them, you know, give a damn.
I'm just sad. One moment I'm in love with Steven, next moment I find out he's with this girl, Deirdre. It's like, what the fuck, bro? It's like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. She's an institution in my life. Goobies are looking good. Oh, the goobies are looking good. My sweet, sweet gobelinos. Do you think the idea or the fundamental knowledge is more important? Is there any wrong? Uh, if there is any wrong, I'm sorry, I use translate. Hey, no problem, uh, Gopnik. Um, the idea. The idea is more important. If you're gonna ask on like the highest level, um, the idea is more important. Not not necessarily for um for us, for us artists, you know. Plenty of us are going to think uh, an idea is not more important if it's not executed wonderfully, but I'm just saying based on my read of the general population, the way projects succeed, things like that, it's like ideas are more important. Like just look at some of the most successful comics in the world, like what is it, uh, KXCD or whatever it is, it's like, it's stick figures. Like it just has excellent ideas, you know? That's always gonna be more important to people. And if you do incredible renditions of poo-poo ideas, I mean, it's only gonna reach a, a niche audience. It's gonna be much harder for non-artists to relate to what you made. Artists will be able to see through and just be like, holy crap, you are really good at drawing, but a wider audience is just not really going to be that moved by that. I'm in a couple of academic circles where the video has been a helpful tool to get otherwise distant and eager researchers to understand the empathic reasons against it. Oh, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been very hardened to hear that people are showing it in schools and universities and sharing it around. Um, I really appreciate that for anybody who's doing that. Um, it, I've definitely heard of it um, sparking some debates in, in certain uh, studios and things like that, but... Um, I think it's got to be discussed. Can you go silent for a few minutes? Yeah, you can call now? Yeah. All right. I got to go temporarily silent people. Talk again soon. You know how it is. Work from home.
All right, I'm back. Do, 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 do. back the way that I like it. Long, long man meets his eternal rival. Long, long cop. Chat went goblin mode for a while. I didn't see what you guys were up to. I was too busy focusing on my work. Unlike you peasants. I was too busy keeping stylus to the screen, not tippity tapping. And writing out silly little goblin mode comments. Steven, what do you think of the new Proco video with the AI Grant guy? Is that the video you were expecting or is there another? Um, it was very interesting to hear. Uh, very interesting to hear. Uh, I had a, the one I was expecting was a, is one with me actually. And um, we recorded that a while ago. I had actually, the video with me um, and with um, Carlo Ortiz is a lot of, Stan presenting us the arguments from that first video and us uh, discussing them. So even before I watched the video, I'd already heard those arguments through Stan. We haven't done just a green goblin yet, right? All right, let's make him green. Why not? Ooh, uh, 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 oh, Whoa, uh, uh, oh, oh, the goblin. Ooh, uh, uh, oh, oh, my goblin. Oh, my goblin. What are you sighing about over there? Dude, don't be so upset. What are you so upset about? Don't you draw goblins for fame and money?
Okay. Okay. Are you eating lunch right now? Lunch time, ain't it? Holy God, you're right. When will I eat a lunch? The Grant guy seemed very naive to capitalism and the speed of changing the world. Yeah, the utopian, the view, the, 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 the utopian justifications for doing this AI stuff without any oversight uh, very much trouble me, very much trouble me. We don't have a good drawing for this guy, so we're just gonna make them out of blobs of paint. We're doing it the dumb way. We're doing it the dumb way, friends and family. Cause it's goblins, all right? We don't, you don't need to do goblins the best way. We got a human nose, we got a bearish, piggish, molish nose, we got a short round nose, let's do a long pointy nose. the fun of designing in a cast it gives you direction as you do more characters because you look for variety instead of just doing the same stuff all over and over again Steven, what's the dumbest way to practice at art? Um, only imagining the piles of money you're gonna make. That's the dumbest way to practice. wrong. Did you get your socks wet? Worst feeling. Don't even try. Just swap them out. Put those in the hamper. Oh goblins, how I love ya. Meet me at my house. Buy me dinner. Goblins. Boyfriend, take me out on the town, make me dance, spin me around. I love you, goblin. Look me in the eyes, goblin. Boyfriend, 
Carla Anglada says, now I want to know what goblins taste like. Jesus Christ. You guys are nasty. What the hell? Keep it PG, please. Gobliano. Thank you. 
Fish Flops with the 10 SGD. Thank you so much, Fish Flops. You're the most benevolent of benefactors, I'll tell you what. You're the most generous of donators. You're the kindest of all contributors. Thank you so much, Fish Flops. Keeping me pumped full of caffeine. You got me on the pump. You got the tube rammed right down my throat. Filling me up with all that caffeine. I'm getting all teary-eyed from the tube being shoved down my throat. A little bit rough, a little bit rough, but it's all right. Cause I know the good stuff's coming. You and your tube technicians, you just cram it right in there. And I look at you guys with tears in my eyes and I'm like, Do 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 do. I don't know about this music right now. Let me twitch it. Oh, who gives a good goddamn? I don't give a damn. Here we go, I'm clicking a button. Which one's gonna be? Yeah. What's for lunch? I hear a microwave. That was my wife microwaving her lunch. I think she's having assorted goblin bits for lunch. Deirdre, what are you eating? Are you eating that microwave risotto? Are you gonna share? God damn it. Auster says, well, what if me and the goblin held hands? I don't know what to say to that. The goblin fetishism in my chat is crazy. It's off the charts. I think to a person, everyone in my chat is in love with goblins. That's a little, little gross. There's some sort of self-selecting set thing going on there. I 
And I don't think it's just because I draw them so sexy. I don't think it's just because I lovingly put in all of the little details designed to titillate. Great White Sufi asks, Stephen, do they really pardon the turkeys? Sorry, not from US. Or do they just say, vaya con Dios, and slay them? Sorry, also not from Spanish country. Uh, we do pardon them. Uh, every year, in what can only be described as the most diabolical sort of mummer's farce, our president picks two turkeys, two very lucky turkeys, who have done nothing wrong, and pardons them, and saves them from food-based execution. Uh, on the grounds of, I don't know, their cuteness, or maybe they they did some meritorious deed at some point in the year, at, at some point in the year, but I'm pretty sure turkey's still getting served in the White House, so some some other bad turkeys, some other bad birds are getting getting eaten instead. It's these two particular turkeys we've decided to let go. But that doesn't mean we're gonna be merciful on the rest of them. He's getting a little dark overall, just gave him a little boost. A little boost in the caboose. My god, we are... We've really... We've made quite a few goblins here over the past few streams. I don't know how this wound up happening. I just really like working in a cast. It's something I've always enjoyed doing. It's one of my favorite exercises. You can do versions of it for full characters, you can do versions of it just for portraits. It's great fun, great training.
Never actually noticed how wild turkeys look, look? Dude, my dude, you gotta, if you've never seen a turkey, you gotta go look at one right now. Close this stream, cancel on your friends, call your mom, tell her not to talk to you for a week, go look at turkeys for a week straight. Turkeys are insane looking. They're the most, they make me crazy. They made me crazy. I was institutionalized the first time that I saw a turkey. It was one of the most traumatic experiences of my life. The way that we treat people and institutions in this country is fucking unbelievable. Especially ones who have been traumatized by viewing turkeys. I don't want to exaggerate this, but my treatment was absolutely criminal. This is a drawing I did a while ago called, uh, what the? I said that's full, that's not full. That's not the full scan, come on, don't lie to me. Where's the big old size? Kinda big. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. No, that won't do. No, I don't think so. I gotta go back at my scans. And I gotta find the real deal. The real scan of the harpy. Come on, baby. Where'd all my scan files go? I forgot that everything's over in my damn Google Drive. God, fine, I'm not gonna download it from Google Drive right now, but that's all based on turkey stuff. The caruncles, their faces are covered in caruncles. I mean, they're ridiculous looking creatures. What's a caruncle? You got two hours? You got two hours to discuss what a caruncle is, my dear wife? Everything about birds is absolutely Horrifying. They're the devil's favorite creatures for sure. They're too weird looking. You ever see them without their feathers on? They're crazy. They got weird skeletons, abjectly strange skeletons, man. They're just so, so deeply odd. Anyway, I find them very inspirational because of they're so weird and so scary and so disturbing. I got some other, got some other disgusting bird art somewhere in here. Let me look for some other stuff. I got some bird art in here, don't worry. Calm down. Well, I'll show you a little bird art. Wait, first of all, I'm, while I go look for other stuff, let me just fix this up a little bit. There we go, now he's looking more like the good old American turkey. Got his little, get his little pilgrim hat on him. There we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking some real Thanksgiving around here, down here, down south in America. Hell yeah. Now that's the kind of bird stuff that I like. And that's the kind of bird content that I'm always seeking. Long as I've been alive, man, you see some good bird stuff. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. Sometimes good bird stuff, sometimes bad bird stuff. Sometimes it seems like nobody get the bird stuff right. <laughs> I remember back when I was a kid, the quality bird content. Yeah, they don't make it like that no more. Every now and then you get yourself a Martin Scorsese or a Quentin Tarantino type, make some good bird content, but like here's some more bird content right here. And mediocre bird content. It's just not as good, not as good. Ain't like the stuff from my youth, bird content I've seen in my youth. Get the, the, get the sale. The sale is not as important as what's going on here with the bird stuff. 
All right. I don't want to look at the sand. I want to look at the bird things. There, let's see. Is that bird? Nope. That's a Yeti. You know what movie I watched recently? I watched um, Hunting Bigfoot. I thought it was great. <laughs> you guys got to see Hunting Bigfoot. That's a great movie. It's on Amazon Prime. Dude, I know there's another bird thing in here. Steven, do you have a scan of Thyrandor? No, I haven't scanned Thyrandor. He's sitting in a, I don't even, he's sitting in a pile over there somewhere. Dude, my bird-based content is hiding from me right now. Here's my first head sketch for the harpy. I did this little sketch in my sketchbook and that maybe uh, you see here, after I did that sketch, I was like, oh, maybe I could do that for the Proco demo. I wrote here, Harpy for Proko. And then that head, I was like, I can imagine the rest of that body. And then I went in and did the bigger drawing and changed the head a bit. But you can see the basic bones are there. It's the same layout. I made the, noise much, I made the nose much more pointier because I wanted it to kind of allude to a turkey's beak. Where's the quality bird content I'm looking for? Oh man, I should finish this version of the harpy. This was a version of the harpy I wanted to do years ago. Much more, uh, much more unreal, much more zombified. This drawing stayed like that. It's in a pile somewhere in that state. Damn, that was a good one. I really like the, the configuration of the hand, the wing being folded up. The skeletal head doesn't make any sense, but it's just cool. I should go back and finish that one. It was also, it was like crouching perched. It was like in a crouching perched position. Lots of bird-based content right now. Now we're talking. Look at that bird right there. Woo, nearly. That looks like the kind of birds I remember from my youth. Hey, this Steven boy ain't so bad. Brings a tear to me eye. I didn't think anybody could get the bird-like content the way that I used to like it, but look at that. That's some good bird stuff right there. Look, don't worry, I have more bird-based content. Huh? You thought I was kidding, huh? More bird-based content. They said it, it couldn't be done. They said it was impossible. They said there's no way Steven has more bird-based content. Wrong. Wrong again, idiots. Absolutely wrong. Embarrassingly wrong. Bird-based content continues. Look at that guy. That's bird-based content right there. If you don't think I have more bird-based content, fool, clown, shut, shut up, shut up. You're in the wrong place. If you think that's the situation. There's a particular sheet that I'm looking for that I'm like, that's, that's the most appropriate sheet for this holiday. My God, where is it? My God, where is it? Where, is, there it is, ha! Boom, baby. All right, Steven, I'm gonna have to get on a call. Shut, ah, oh, damn it. 
All right. I got to mute again, but I'm just going to gesticulate at this.
I'm back. I think, um, I think it's pretty likely my wife's gonna have a bunch of uh, calls over the next uh, hour or so before we head to my in-laws. So uh, rather than keep annoying you guys by going silent and stuff like that over and over again, I uh, think I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna start wrapping it up here. I'm gonna do a little bit more work on this chicken first. I wasn't planning on this. I had completely forgotten about these guys, but as soon as I saw them, I was like, this is, this is the right thing to do on Thanksgiving. I don't remember when I did these guys or why. <laughs> but they're pretty fun designs. Again, working in a cast is so fun, right? Like not just doing one, but putting them next to each other and looking for variety across the designs. Um, I love doing stuff like this. I do it all the time. It really pushes you. It makes you look for different kinds of designs instead of just repeating things. That is so cool, I wish turkeys were real. Don't we all? We all wish that, but they're not. Did you see, did you guys see that uh, the first lab grown meat got FDA approval recently? It's a cultured chicken meat. So it's grown in a vat. Pretty interesting, yeah. I don't know if, uh, I didn't look too far into it. I don't know if the FDA approval means like now they can bring it to market or if there's still like another step they need to go through. But um, as far as I know, that's the first one. Very funny, Carl, very funny. Lab grown meat equals meat from imagination. Animal meat equals meat from ref. Sounds about right. Everything's adding up here. What is the best digital art software from your experience? I do think in the long run, the best one is just the one that you're most used to. Um, I actually think Photoshop kind of sucks, <laughs> but um, I've been using it since I was 13. So it's really hard to, it's really hard to switch. Photoshop sucks, Photoshop sucks dude, what a crap, freaking horrible program. I just can't break away from it because I, I know it, I know it down to the deepest parts of its little Photoshop asshole. So that, that's a level of familiarity and comfort that uh, I don't have with any other program.
if um, for a beginner or someone who's starting out with um, digital tools, I think I'd probably recommend Clip Studio Paint. I think it's a better product. It's more focused on drawing. Um, if you just want to like draw simple pictures, you know, you don't want to do like comics or huge files or manipulate a lot of photos and stuff like that. If you're really focused on um, just drawing and painting in a more simple way and you don't need a million layers and stuff, I think Procreate is fantastic. I love Procreate. I would use it for everything. It's just that it's not, um, it's not sort of cracked open enough to let you do all of the stuff that I need to do. You know, I, with the range of things that I do, I need pretty serious file management abilities and it's just not there with Procreate. I wanted to try Rebel 5. You think it is a good alternative? I don't know. I've never used Rebel. I've seen some stuff that I think uh, Craig Mullins did in it, but I've never tried it. I don't think. I've tried a lot of stuff. It's a little hard to remember sometimes. I think the Rebel is really focused on simulating traditional media in like a very direct way. Um, I think the closest to that I've tried is Art Rage. I went through a little phase where I used Art Rage. A little phase for Art Rage. It was cool. Hide some blue veins in this boy. In this boy. Deep in the boy. Adds a little bit of contrast with the red. It's very subtle. Steven, is the Galaxy S8 Ultra a good choice to make nice digital art? Ooh, I, I have never worked on a, on a Galaxy tablet even once, so I really cannot say. I have no idea what the screen feels like, what their pen styluses feel like. I just have no clue, I'm sorry. Probably Amazon. It's probably my little bottle of ink. 
I don't really know though, so. We got to be careful about that. Now's the now stealing season. Run to Long Island. Check the traffic. Can you check the traffic real quick? Yeah, it's bad. What are you getting? Over an hour? Over an hour? So we can't. You've got your meeting in 50 minutes. Yeah. What are you thinking? You're trying to be late to it? Take your meeting from the car? Oh, that's, crazy. that's crazy. You're insane. <laughs> Unboxing time? No, I, I don't have time today, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll unbox. Well, not unbox, but I'll play with my new, uh, new pen nibs next week on stream. Do a little bit of inking. Okay, what? We're gonna make a break for it? No, I need a lunchtime stress bath. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna go eat some lunch before I gotta head out. Uh, again, I am not going to do a stream on Friday. Gonna be taken off uh, out at the in-laws for the holiday. Uh, these are some chickens that we worked on today. Uh, I did most of these uh, long ago, but I did wind up sprucing them a little bit. And here's a progress on our goblins. We finished up this guy at least to the sort of sketch render level, sketchy-ish, render-ish, painting in any ish level that we're doing these guys to. Just an acceptable amount. Actually, I could, I could pump that arm up a bit. I should go in there and do another light pass on that arm. I know, I say I'm gonna leave, and then I do this over and over again, and I just can't go because drawing is very fun. Um, hello, give me my, what are you, what's wrong with you? So yes, I will not stream on Friday, I don't think, but I will be back next week. Uh, people who are taking the course, I am still going to be uh, looking at feedback and giving feedback. Um, so just because I'm taking off of stream doesn't mean I'm not going to be looking at what you guys are up to in the assignments that you are submitting. And uh, don't forget everyone that the course is on sale until Monday, until the 28th, through the 28th. Uh, you can get $100 off a form from Imagination. Check it out. You can go find the curriculum and see what it's all about at www.formfromimagination.com. I appreciate everybody who's been getting it. I'm so excited to see your assignments and your work, and I want you to get better, and I appreciate the support, of course. It is an honor to be your drawing companion and to contribute to your artistic education. I hope the course helps you. And Esdras Munos gave me $4.99 right before I leave. That's incredible. Lunch coffee. Thank you so much. Let me honor you for the donation. Esdras Muno. Now I got to fix my gain. Uh -huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> Estras Munos 
five dollars in lunchtime coffee i will keep you in my heart while i sip people stare at me because i say esdras under my breath every time i take a drink and i sputter my coffee all over the place and it's scalding hot and oh no it landed on the face of that toddler ouch that looks like it hurts officer i'm just trying to enjoy my drink here thank you so much for the donation Estras, and to everybody out there who is trying to live a normal life of joy and happiness, I hope that you do get to live that normal life of joy and happiness. Don't forget to not let anybody get in the way of your goddamn enjoyment of drawing. It's important to be creative. If you have the creative impulse, one of the worst things that you could do is not honor it and to pretend that you're not creative and not do the drawings that you need to be doing because that will create a sort of spiritual and internal constipation that will eventually ruin your life and you'll look back in many, many years and you'll wonder, why didn't I just spend a little bit of all that time drawing or making my comic or doing the paintings or doing the writing that I wanted to do? So even if mommy doesn't agree, even if daddy doesn't agree, even if your partner doesn't agree screw them it's got nothing to do with them make your art anyway be a happy creative person the world needs it that's the other thing it's a nice thing to do for the world because if you go crazy and you become upset and you become resentful of creativity that's only going to turn you into a goblin who haunts the world and resents the world and makes things go worse for other people so the nicest thing that you can do for other people if you are a deeply creative person is to exercise your creativity. Even if you don't, even if no one's really reacted super well to your art, it's gonna make you a calmer, happier person. So it's like, you should totally do it. Goodbye to Carla Anglada. Goodbye to Reynola Dominguez. Goodbye to Michael Schlater, who says, have a nice time with your wife, enjoy the moment, we all should, yes. You know, life is too short. Um, there's so many beautiful things to enjoy, you gotta enjoy it. My good friend, Joseph Marziliano says, happy Thanksgiving, everyone, I just came in, hello and goodbye. Wakamfa forever. Thank you so much, Joe. I love you, buddy. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours and little Clover. And um, as always, you're my beautiful, glistening boyfriend. And don't tell anybody that's our secret. Big kiss to you. Rub you on the shoulders. Maybe pat your butt a little bit. A little bit. About to get the course while it's on sale, says Kenneth Carroll. Thank you so much, Kenneth Carroll. I appreciate the support. You are one of the biggest benefactors and the most glorious of beneficiaries of everybody in this stream. It's that kind of learning that makes it so that we can keep streaming and doing things like this. So God bless you. Whatever God you do or don't believe in, may they bless you. May you be blessed with the light of the void. May emptiness swallow you whole. Does that sound nice? That sounds mean, but I meant it in a nice way. Thank you so much, Kenneth. Great work, Stephen. Thank you so much, Gemmel. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Y'all are friends. All right, everybody. Bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble. Uh, don't forget to never take your car to the mechanic.